It's an exciting holiday season for an electronics buyer. You got some really interesting new products on the market, if you can get your hands on them, that is. There is the new 5G iPhone in three sizes and with a sexy new design. Apple is really ramping up marketing alongside the telecoms to push the 5G angle and sell a huge amount of these new phones. Apple has also begun transitioning its Macs from Intel chips to its own Apple Silicon. The first generation M1 chip has impressed reviewers with its performance and battery life. The MacBook Air is Apple's most popular Mac and they sell millions of units a year. And that's one of the uh, MacBooks that get the new M1 chip. How many units? Who knows? Apple has been working hard to hide their unit sales numbers over the years. You also have a new generation of gaming consoles, the Xbox Series X and S, as well as the PlayStation 5. The gaming industry has never been hotter, what with the global pandemic and all everyone being inside. Consoles are long-lived hardware items. They sell a lot of units over many years. The PS4 has sold over 100 million units since its release in 2013. The prior Xbox One is estimated to have sold over 40 million since 2013. And then you got the two large overarching trends relating to the 5G transition, Qualcomm and the like churning out chips for 5G enabled mobile phones and cloud computing with so many people around the world being locked in their homes. All these trends will require an immense amount of chips to drive them. The chips for the first three products, those from Apple and the gaming consoles are exclusively made by TSMC. Being one of the last two fabs using the latest advanced processes TCMC is also a major fab for companies operating in the cloud computing and uh, 5G markets. Shortages are the usual case with any new product launch. There is always more demand at the start than supply. But the pandemic has interrupted supply chains everywhere and sent demand levels to unprecedented new heights. So it's hard to say whether or not the shortages that we are seeing in the PS5, Xbox, MacBook Air are related to TSMC not making enough chips, or because of some other component that's missing, or because demand is simply just that high. But what the foundry is making is indeed critical to the final product being ready. While waiting for the M1 MacBook Air to become available in Taiwan, I began to think about the sheer amount of chips that TSMC needs to make in order to satisfy all of its customers while maintaining market share. It has thus led to this video. It's less exactly a video essay, I would say, than a collection of thoughts and ideas around the idea of TSMC making enough chips. But first, again, I want to take the time to talk briefly about a new thing that I'm committing myself to working on. I want to direct your attention to the Agenometry email newsletter. The newsletters will have more information outside what can be found in the video. So I'm including a lot more sources, including a lot more additional commentary, some data, maybe some charts, and um, some interesting links that I've seen from time to time. Um, so I just want to call out in the newsletter, we have an upcoming IPO analysis of a Chinese AI company, uh, MegV. I went through the Hong Kong prospectus and I really enjoyed it. It's coming out, I believe, in a couple weeks, but maybe I'll move it up as I get more content into the site. Um, so yeah, I hope you find it worth subscribing. We'll try to make it worth your while and much thanks. I wanted to start things off with the idea of capacity. TSMC makes about 12 million 12 inch equivalent wafers a year. Each wafer, depending on various factors, can result in tens of thousands of chips, uh, dies, I suppose. Um, but not all of these wafers are made with the most advanced processes. Almost all of the company's wafers are fabbed in Taiwan, in facilities in the cities of Tainan, Xinchu, and Taizong. Uh, there are two fabs on mainland China, Shanghai and Nanjing, and then one up in Washington state, but those two are not using the latest fabbing processes, which is now the uh, five, and, uh, 5 nanometer process. Again, I, I do want to interject another reminder. The 5 nanometer name, which Apple is using right here, is an industry-wide marketing label and does not correspond to any actual measurement on the chip die itself. The progression so, is intended to replicate the expected benefits in terms of performance and power consumption. So 7 is supposedly better than 5. Uh, 
five is supposedly better than six, but six is better than seven. Um, but like I said, it doesn't really mean or tie to anything necessarily on the chip itself, the die itself. Um, TSMC, if you notice, in its uh, press correspondences and conferences actually calls the process N5. Uh, so just a little piece of information there. There's another N5 fab being built in Arizona, but it's rather small and is likely to be for government or location sensitive applications. In addition, by the time the foundry is ready in two or so years, the N5 will no longer be the cutting edge process. It will be per superseded by the N5 plus and the N3 and maybe even uh, more than that. Uh, the chips for Apple's latest iOS devices, as well as the M1 MacBook that I'm waiting for, are made in Fab 18 in Tainan. Fab 18 is the cutting edge of cutting edge facilities, costing an estimated $17 billion. TSMC broke ground on Fab 18 in January 2018. Initial production run of N5 chips began sometime in Q2 2020, but the Fab won't hit full volume targets until 2021 when its Phase 3 is completed. It does not appear that TSMC is going to be building any more N5 facilities on Taiwan. The Arizona facility seems to be what they're focusing on right now. And I've heard, well, not heard, you just Google it. They've recently begun hiring. TSMC has a two-year half-step cycle for its flagship processes. The first year, you're going to N7, N5, or N3 process advancement, which is a big jump. The second year, TSMC improves on that and unveils a half-step improvement, which is essentially a plus process that refines the previous year step. So that means an N7P or N5P process. Uh, TSMC does this to accommodate Apple's annual iPhone release cycle. Uh, if you want to learn more, you can watch that video. So 2020 is for the N5 process. 2021, we'll see N5 plus, and 2022, the N3. Um, that's just the cutting edge. There's also... They do improvements on top of the, you know, trailing edge uh, processes as well, but I won't talk about that. N5P is not expected to require a new fab, so it's still going to come out of the Tainan Fab 18. Uh, the N3 fab, which is also in Tainan, is scheduled to start coming online two years from now. That new fab, which I guess is um, Fab 19, I suppose, is estimated to cost $19.5 billion in total double of what it cost TSMC to build Fab 15 in Taitong 10 years earlier. Cost inflation for semiconductor processes is very real. So, since we can't expect more foundries being built in the immediate future, I think the key to TSMC getting more chips out to meet customer demand is one, hitting phase three on time. Um, hopefully, uh, they, they, they say they're on track to do that. Uh, but also by improving the yield rate. That means getting the highest possible number of quote-unquote good chips per wafer. Per the documentation that uh, the company's providing, N5 is trending in the right direction, following its predecessor N7's path to a 90% plus yield. So that's really good news. The stakes are high. Capacity means more than just some consumers not getting their stuff immediately. It also means real business. NVIDIA and Qualcomm defected from TSMC to its great enemy, Samsung Foundry, recently for some of their top new products. NVIDIA's exciting new graphics cards, uh, the RTX series 3000s, I suppose, for example, are fabbed on Samsung's 8 nanometer process. Part of the reason for this has to be price, as Samsung reportedly offers more favorable terms than TSMC. But I also wonder if TSMC's production capacity has something to do with it as well. And I think that this is one thing that you know, Intel still has over AMD, Apple, and many other semi-companies in the market. Intel might not have the performance crown anymore, but they do still have the, ca the capacity. Intel covers the entire market from top to bottom and has built enough foundries to meet that supply. Intel's 2020 chip production numbers are estimated to be over 60% higher than TSMC's and twice as much as what AMD, NVIDIA, and Apple are buying combined. So it's more of a competitive advantage than you think. 
in my opinion, half of the winning the game is just showing up. The customers might love your products, but if they can't get their hands on them, it doesn't matter. They'll buy something else. The sheer size of Intel's capacity makes me wonder about the likelihood of the rumors of Intel tapping TSMC's 5 nanometer process, uh, the N5, for a future chip. Uh, Intel has been a TSMC customer for a very long time, ever since Intel bought Altera for $16 billion in 2015, but it's never used the foundry for its most advanced CPU products. It might need to, though, for a critical project that industry people are closely watching. There's an American government project that Intel has been commissioned for, the $500 million Aurora supercomputer. It's due to be delivered in 2021, but its chips, named Ponte Vecchio, I probably messed that up, after a bridge in Europe, need to be made by Intel using its latest 7 nanometer process, which is roughly equivalent to TSMC's N5. Intel 7 nanometer is now delayed. It's scheduled to go into high volume by late 2022. So either Aurora is delayed for the second time it seems, or Intel taps TSMC for the early Ponte Vecchio run. The interesting thing is that a lot of the signs seem to be pointing towards it. Not only the comments made by Intel CEO in recent earnings calls, but technology architecture wise too. Anantech recently pointed out in an article that Intel has been rolling out these new technologies that allow it to essentially mix and match dyes of different process technologies for a final product. So theoretically it can put together a chip with dyes from its own 14 nanometer foundry, its 10 nanometer foundry, and maybe a dye from TSMC's 5 nanometer foundry. It gives them more flexibility and further opens the door to third party dyes. Interesting stuff. But it means that uh, TSMC has to provide the capacity for Intel. And like I just said, one of Intel's big things is that it can generate enough chips to meet an immense market need. So I'm just wondering, where is that capacity going to come from? Are they maybe even building towards possibly meeting that you know, possible future demand, as well as the current demand they're already doing? So I guess we can look at the capital expenditure number. TSMC is expected to spend some $17 billion in capital expenditures from 2020. It had raised that budget from $16 billion to $17 billion at the Q2 2020 earnings call. In 2019, uh, the company spent some $15.3 billion. The fact that TSMC didn't change that forecast at the Q3 2020 earnings call makes me wonder if they either think that they have enough capacity or that they can't get any more of what they want to spend it on. TSMC gets supplier hardware from a company in the Netherlands, ASML. ASML only makes a few of these machines every year. Does the flat capital expenditure number means that there's no more uh, machines for it to buy? Maybe. But the flat capital expenditure number makes me wonder if the Intel customer is actually coming. Or if it's coming at all in very small numbers. TSMC has said that it hopes to maintain 50% market share in the foundry industry going forward. This is a hyper competitive market. You're competing against Samsung as well as the unlimited funds of the Chinese government. Capacity is going to be a critical factor in whether or not TSMC can manage and maintain that 50% market share. TSMC is likely to be able to sell every chip they can make. For me, I wonder if they're going to be able to make enough. All right, everyone. Have a good one. Take care of yourselves. See you later.